And one of the questions for us is from Wandering Tumnus on Twitter. It says, how sustainable is the eight-man rotation that Tibbs went with versus Indy? Eight-man rotation. He went with uh, McBride, Payne, and Sims off the bench. Uh, Stevie, I'll start with you, man. Your thoughts on the on the uh, on that bench unit? No presses a chua right now. What, no, what do you think? It's, I, I think that look, it, it is. I, I've learned now. I'm, I've stopped second guessing a lot. <laughs> they yeah. keep proving me wrong, so I, I shut my mouth now. It's like mm-hmm. so. I, I, I learned. I realized on a while ago. Tim knows a lot about more, a lot more about basketball than I do. And mm-hmm. you know, so so I'll, I'll follow the lead. Do I, I think it's risky? Like if Josh does play this early, and plays big minutes. Like I said, being, being questionable. I, I think that's real. I, yeah. But I mean, I, I I can't argue with the decisions anymore because the decisions what got us here. So I'm just like, all right, let's do this. Let's, let's let's roll with it. That's fair. Al, what do what do you think, man? I think it's sustainable. You know, what's going to happen is that when you get nights against the Detroit Pistons, if you know we're giving them a beating. You're going to see what happened against the Pacers. You're going to start seeing that the bench gets to come in early around the third, fourth quarter, and then that's it, man. Then you start to preserve those guys. But as we've talked about in previous shows through over the years, man, is that Tibbs doesn't hold the, like, Riley-type practices, right? He Like, we've heard from uh, John uh, John Krasinski, who covers mm-hmm. the Timberwolves. You know, he's oh, he mentioned that Tibbs doesn't run practices like that, so... I'm not really too worried about it. I think they're going to be fine. I think offensively, if this team could do what they did against the Pacers to like the Pistons and any other team coming up, this team's going to get enough rest in between for the for the starting for the front eight. You know what I mean? So yeah, they should be fine. Yeah, I, I, fa- yeah. I'm actually fascinated to want. I always want like what Tibbs' house looks like. Is it like papers <laughs> just everywhere? Like like you know like like you cut you if you came in with like camera, you just see some dude like this scribbling plays like like talking to himself. Like, Gotta be some weird stuff like that. <laughs> gotta be, gotta be, man. Uh, I, I think you know they're just gonna try to tread as much water as they can until Precious Achua comes back. You know, once he comes back, he will be to me probably the backup five for most games. You know, unless you're going up against like a Brook Lopez or Jokic or something like that. But I think once Precious comes back, he'll be the backup five. Payne and McBride will be your guards. So the nights where it could hit nine. Could be on a night where, you know, if, let's say Towns gets into some foul trouble. You got to go with Precious. You got to go with Sims. Maybe Sims is that ninth-ish type of guy. Or maybe it's, you know, when Shamit comes back, do they get him in there if they need some shooting on a night? But I think for most nights, it, it's going to be around eight, maybe nine on, on a good night. And, and, if, and if they do add that extra guy, it's going to come from the front court for the most part. Definitely going to come from the front court. All right. Next question is from on the Twitter side. Um, nah, this is just a long Twitter name. Uh, HKZ and a, and, a num- and a number. I hope it's not a social security number. But it says, not a lot of Kolik these first two games. What do you contribute this to? Now, what do you think, man? Kolik Hive, he's a little antsy, man. Look, man, I, we've already talked about the beginning of the show. This guy yeah. has to earn his minutes. This team is good right now. They got a starting... They got a starting eight that they're going to roll with. So Kolek yeah. is going to have to prove to Tibbs, earn his trust to be- to break that rotation. I think he can. I think by, I'm going to say by January, we're going to see more Kolek minutes, man. I just feel like it's going to happen. The campaign is so erratic that you can't trust this yeah. guy. And I feel like if you want consistent playmaking, Kolek is going to work his way into the rotation. I'd say around January that we start to see more Kolek. But look, man, he's going to have to prove that Whatever that threshold I mentioned earlier in the show that he will not perform under that, that's what he has to produce for Tibbs in order to trust him. So I think he will get there. The guy's very poised, solid playmaker. I think what needs to happen for him is to be that consistent shooter. And once he can show that in practice, then I think, you know, and even in the limited minutes at the end of games, then I think he'll start to crack the rotation. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you, man. Uh, Al, TM says, check your Slack. Check your Slack. Uh, oh, Steve- I am. I'm, I'm checking the Slack. <laughs> Stevie, have you gotten a chance to uh, see Tyler Kolick, whether, you know, summer league, preseason, and any impressions of the, of the young point guard? He can play. I watched him a little bit. He can play, but I, I agree with the point. Listen, this is Tibbs. You're not coming on this team as a rookie. Look at McBride. You're not coming. That's right. I was just watching a clip. McBride was talking to why am I blanking right now? Porty. 
Yeah, we played yeah. it. We played it earlier. Oh, you played it earlier. It's yeah. Like, this is your time. You were in your minute. This is, by the way, but this goes back to the first, what I love about the culture of this team, you know, and it's really, he'll get his time. This kid, this kid can play. He can yeah. definitely play. Yeah. I mean, I have to believe he's the reason we didn't bring Rockets over. You know, we didn't bring the Rockets. Speaking yeah, of, yeah. you know, like pun intended. <laughs> but it's like, you know, like, so he'll get his shine. Yeah. Just take it's going to take time. Uh, I'm with you guys. It's going to take time, and uh, they're just going to have to let it marinate a little bit. Right now, this this is campaign show to run it, running that second unit as, as the point guard. So it, it just is what it is. All right, one more on the Twitter side goes for DNova29. He says, so far, how do you rate our offense? Has the spacing with Cat on the floor been a significant improvement from last year? Al, only two games in, but your thoughts so far on the spacing offense? I thought I think it's still even too early to really answer that question because yeah. I didn't think the spacing was there against Boston. And then, look, man, the Pacers defense is horrific. It's yes. not even existent. Different you know? team. So, different team defense. It's like it's it's a night and day. I can't even answer that question. I think it will be good, but we truly got like one of the best defenses to start off the season, and then one of the worst defenses. True. Game two. So it's like I don't even know what the middle looks like for spacing because the Knicks did everything they wanted against Indy True. and then we're couldn't, limited couldn't get to like much really going. work in the paint against yeah. the Celtics. So couldn't get much I think it will work out, but we're just going to need more time to see. Yeah, for, for sure. Uh, uh, Stevie, your thoughts on the potential with the Towns addition compared to how things were with, you know, Mitch or even Hartenstein last year? Sure. I, I think the potential is amazing just because the guy the kid can shoot. <laughs> the kid can play. T- mm-hmm. Towns is, is an elite player. Don't let don't let him twist it. All the, the Twitter talk and all this that he's not he's not hard. He's not big. the kid can play. And just just I, I like I said, I only watch one or two, so I have zero comment on the spacing. But I will say again, the spacing behind that Halliburton donut was huge. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I hope he watches this show. I really <laughs> Uh, well, you know, uh, yeah, was it? Well, Brunson, Hart, and, and all those guys—they did play for Team USA. So, you know, if, if they they could be send, sending clips, wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, for for sure, man. Um, yeah, look, it's it's only been two games. You, you can't you can't glean too much off of it. Like you said, Alan, against the Celtics, they weren't they weren't giving the Knicks much of an inch, but the Knicks were still able to muster up offense. It was just on the defensive side where they got the doors blown off. But against the Pacers. You saw mixed looks, you know, when when Towns is popping out on those pick and pops and he's spacing out to the top of the key. That's a different look. You weren't seeing Mitchell Robinson doing that last year or even Isaiah Hartenstein to a certain extent. Then there were certain uh, situations where Towns is rolling all the way to the basket or he's playing more down low or, or, you know, near the dunker spot where he can get a high efficiency shot. So they're able to to show different looks. Just like you said, Al, you want to see more of that pick and roll scenarios pick and roll potential between Brunson and Towns because I, I truly believe that uh that that can be very very prolific here's okay. CP I'll give you yeah. this here through we two, go through the through the few games we have you know for some teams they played three at least at minimum teams have played two games mm-hmm. the Knicks right now are fourth in the NBA when it comes to an offensive rating with mm-hmm. 123.4. Number one right now is the Boston Celtics. <laughs> of course. Two is the Golden State Warriors. Three is the Cleveland Cavaliers. Mm-hmm. Number five is actually the Los Angeles Lakers. 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 JJ Reddick has them yeah, working. Lakers, bro. Did you see LeBron last night? Yeah, man. Bro, LeBron Lakers are crazy are different last than night, what man. the season's past. Yeah, JJ Reddick. They, they got them uh, a well oiled machine right now. All right. Um, final question goes to on the YouTube side, franchise channel members. Shout out to. Uh, remakes music shout out to remakes music and their question is with all the additions to the roster do you think brunson's average will stay the same at the same level and does he have a shot at mvp stevie what do you think can brunson get the mvp this year that's a good question you know something i'm gonna i'm gonna go with he has a real shot at mvp mm. I mean, if he played the level he could play with the pieces they have around him i mean it, it's just it, it's, I mean, he has so many great guys that just don't need to hold the rock that yeah. he can, he can, he can, he can, and, and like I said, a pick and pop and pick and roll with Cat is going to be unstoppable. Yeah. So if it gels, maybe it's going to take to next year, just because it's going to take them time to gel as a team. Mm-hmm. I'll go with most likely, the, I mean, we were talking to hypotheticals, most likely not this year. Mm-hmm. I'm going with definitely next year. He gets mm-hmm. his MVP. Finished, finished uh, fifth last year, fifth Al. Last 28.7 year. points per game. What do you think? Can he can he legitimately get the uh, MVP? 
It's so tough to think about if Brunson could get the MVP because the reason he was in that conversation is because offensively he was carrying the Knicks last season to average 28 points. Mm -hmm. The assist that he was putting, that he was getting to, I think it was around seven, eight assists that he was doing last year. Like all of that, you know, threw him into the MVP consideration because there was no Julius, you lose Mitch. There's so many injuries that came through the Knicks way that when you watch that team on a night to night basis, you needed Jalen Brunson to stay afloat. Mm -hmm. And not only did they stay afloat, they got the 50 wins. All right. They were second in the East last year. Yeah. That's how great he was. But to Stevie's point, I think with all the help that he has this season, I think it's actually going to mute those yes. chances a little bit to be the MVP this season, because let's just use the paces as the example, right? Five guys scored double digits in that starting unit. Four of those five guys got 20 plus points. So it's, it could be evenly distributed throughout, throughout the entire starting five offensively. And I think that may hurt his chances. The thing that unfortunately for national media and all these people who vote, like they don't, they're only going to look at the numbers. They're not going to be able to watch every single game and see the impact that he'll have on the floor. So I think his number is going to take a drop a little bit. And because you have cat bridges and everybody else chipping in, I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah. But I'll go with Stevie. I think next year, you know, if he can, if the, when the chemistry is all together and you see this, the office could take even another leap. Then they're gonna start looking at those numbers like Luca, like Luca type numbers, and be like, yeah. "Oh, this guy, this guy is some something." It, yeah, I think the supporting cast is gonna hurt him, just like just like Tatum's supporting cast hurt him. You know, typically the MVP, they're just gonna have a lot more responsibility, and and it'll show in the numbers, like Jokic, like Embiid. You know, you look at the past winners, Giannis on the back to back wins. You know, Harden in, in 2017, he did have CP3 on that team. That was a very good team. Very deep and very balanced. But you know, Harden still averaged 30 and 8. Yo, Harden was yo, Harden's scoring was yeah. like different. It was man. ridiculous. No one has ever seen a guy score like that. Yeah. Like the way he was coming down the court, the yeah. slow like moving at his own pace. This shoot is just, yeah. I, I don't think I've ever seen anything like that. Like like, you know, when when Westbrook won it, I mean he played with nobody on that team. He was a triple double machine. He was he had to do everything. So yes. I think for me, the hope is is not to have Jalen Brunson have to do everything. Just be there for them, close when they need you to, and generate consistent offense. But I like to see his assists go up because now you have the weapons, more weapons. You have your floor spacing big at Carl Anthony Towns that you can play off of now. I'd like to see his assist number go up. Last year it was at what was his assist number at last year? Let's take a look. 6.7. Let's get it up okay. to 8. Let's get it up to 8 this year. I, I think that that's fair uh, for Jalen Brunson. Get it up to 8, especially with the with the players that, uh, that he now has. 